this is PVA Blood, and in this video, I copy the Adeptus Mechanicus, and maybe the Orcs, by accidentally making something cool. A floating Techno Island. I was contacted by some cool people on Instagram to a scratch building terrain challenge. Four guys and a broken dwarf, and Nosferatu Unbound, whose pages I'll link below, shared with me the following rules. The terrain piece needed to be at least 12 inches by 6 inches, as cool as possible, but still playable, and I had to use cheap materials, with as much as possible being recycled. And importantly, there was no height limit. I gathered my courage and set to work. I started by cutting out that 12 inch by 6 inch tile of insulation foam, quickly abandoning the idea of cutting it tidily, as my vision is that the Mechanicus is pretty much going to be winging it, using a combination of enthusiasm and ignorance to animate, using arcane, forgotten technology, chunks of rock and metal into just terrifying flight. To this end, I'm imagining this is going to be a giant chunk of metal, or stone, that's just been cut barely to size using some wine glasses for the flat stands. To be clear, I am using plastic wine glasses for these flat stands. I'm keeping it as simple as possible. I'm not trimming them to size, I'm just gluing them directly to the base. And then I'm gonna be covering the wine glasses with chunks of foam. So these foam chunks are going to be held in place using a combination of PVA glue and toothpicks. Just stick the toothpicks in to hold it in place whilst the PVA glue is drying. And if the PVA doesn't work, you can use hot glue. Just be aware hot glue can melt the foam if it's too hot. Now I wanted something that was going to draw attention away from the obvious hidden wine glasses. So I decided that I was going to add some piping with the intention of painting it to look like, uh, like a plasma generator or something. I had some old piping that I'd saved from a broken water tank, marked it with a sharpie, cut it to size, and then uh, going to use some hot glue to hold it in place. Looking alright. The other benefit of adding this piping is it's going to help lower the center of gravity, which will help the balance of the piece. Using your pocket marine, check the scale. Yep, it's pretty big. I'm also going to be adding some piping from uh, some dog toys. This comes from like an oinking pig that my dog particularly loves to destroy. So I've got a few of these lying around. I found these cheap Halloween skulls. Unsurprisingly, they have a lot of imperfections and mold lines, but that's actually going to work in our favour here. They're not convincing as human skulls, but they're going to make really good sculptures of a human skull. Use the back of your knife and scrape off any of the really obvious mold lines as best you can. The back of the knife will stop you from cutting yourself. I want the skulls to look like they're built into the platform itself, not balanced on top of it. To achieve this, I'm going to be cutting out a section from the base of the skull and then gluing the skull directly on top. So on each skull, I'm going to mark it out using a sharpie and then carefully slice it out using a knife. Now these skulls are made of a very low quality plastic, so when you do cut into them, be careful not to just punch straight through the skull and into your own hand. Slow, careful, keep your fingers, keep your blood on the inside. Should go without saying, but here we are. Glue that directly on top, and it's looking spooky. Now, for the propulsion system on this platform, I'm going to be making some, like, jet afterburners using some old uh, connectors from garden hoses. I've found a bunch of these in my garden, and I'm just going to cut them here using a handsaw, and then glue the results directly onto the piece. I think they look like jets. Good enough. And of course, I've also found a... Uh, couple of old garden hoses, so I'm just going to glue this on as well. This is potentially maybe some sort of antenna or some sort of calibration equipment for the generator or a connection port. Who knows? It's probably 10,000 years old. Just glue that on. Cool. 
Now the hose connectors have been cut to size, I'm just going to use the hot glue gun to attach them directly to the platform. I'm not trying to be too even in terms of the spacing, like the Mechanicus is just following instructions which barely exist in a language they can no longer read. So this sort of weirdness would make sense. So if you've got any spare pipes, like I'm going to be using from this old soap dispenser, you can stick them out of the uh, base of the platform, so these are like some sort of wastewater pipes that are hanging down. Now I want the top level of this piece to look like it's made out of some sort of ancient, really thick sheet metal. And the best material I could think to do this with was, of course, EVA foam. I roughly traced the outline of the platform onto the foam and then cut it to size. I'm also going to add some pipes to give some more detail to this surface, so when I cut it out, I cut it into segments. Now these segments, I'm going to rough up the edges to form gutters. Nothing else was exact or straight line, so I thought it'd be weird if these were particularly tidy. The pipes that are going to go inside these gutters are made from just cheap paper straws. Hold them in place and then cut them at an angle for the uh, pipes to form a logical bend. They're just glued down with PVA. And uh, yeah, nice and easy. Don't be afraid to experiment with different angles or different connections in the pipes. And they do not actually need to end at the edge of the piece itself. Having them take a sudden change in direction into the actual material just gives the impression that there is a whole pipe network running beneath the surface here. Following that, we're going to be using some wires. Now think of the drawer that I absolutely know you have in your house that is filled with old chargers and cables for tech you've thrown out years ago. Grab some of those chargers, grab some of those cables. I think this is an old telephone cable. You're going to be cutting these up and using them to create your own Mechanicus icon. Now in order to create your own cog mechanicum, simply take a knife to the eye socket of a skull, be careful not to punch all the way through to the back, and create a little divot in which the wires can fit. Apply some hot glue. Once that's in, start jamming wire segments into the actual eye socket. Don't worry about being too precise, just get them in. So if you've got a variety of different thicknesses of wire or any sort of variation in texture that'll help the effect but if not don't worry about it don't be concerned about the length of the wire longer segments of wire can be trimmed down later likewise shorter segments you can just have begin and end on the skull itself such as flowing into the nose the other eye or even down into the mouth just try to get it in before the glue sets if you find it starting to set before you're done just put a dollop of more hot glue in Nice. You can see here that I've got the wires flying into the terrain piece, and I've also added a large piece of pipe going into the mouth of one of them, held in place with more hot glue. You can see some of the wires going over the top of the skull. If you think they're shifting around a bit too much, you can use some super glue to help hold them in place. PVA will also work. I also added some plastic sticks along the top there to form a railing. Very grimdark. You can see on the top here how those ethernet port cables or the telephone cables, the actual connections, I've stuck at the back to be like computer terminals. Lots of those wires I've woven together and stuck them into the actual uh, where the wine glasses are to look like they may be involved in controlling the thrusters in the engine. You can see on that pipe there, I also had an excessive amount of hot glue dripping down to form chemical spill. Now lastly, I added some rhinestones to the skulls to look like uh, studs or screw ports, rivets, whatever they're called, in the actual skull itself. When I stuck them down, I then painted them with PVA glue. The whole reason we use the wine glasses is that they are transparent. Naturally, we don't want to get paint or any other material stuck on them. To protect them, just put a piece of paper over the top and hold it in place with some masking tape. If you do accidentally get some paint or gap filler on it, any normal kitchen surface cleaner will get it right off.
If you know my work at all, this won't be a surprise. The next step is some gap filler. I'm just going to be applying this over any of the areas that I want to be stonework, naturally focusing on the gaps. Don't worry about being too tidy, as we're going to be going over this later, cutting some excess off and painting it all again anyway. When you've given the gap filler a couple of hours to dry, go over it with a knife and cut some chunks out, rough it up, maybe some bullet holes, just any areas where it's looking a bit too smooth or a bit lacking detail. Feel free to be rough with it. Once that's done, we're going to be using some grout to add some further detail and fill in any gaps we already missed. Before you apply the grout, you're going to need a mixture of paint and glue in a takeaway container of a lid. That's an equal part grey paint to PVA glue with water added until the consistency is like slightly thick milk. Slightly thick milk. That's disgusting. But it's what you're looking for. Mix it up and then you're going to be putting that down directly on the terrain. Now apply that paint glue mixture around the base of the pipes in any of the crevices where you might have missed with the gap filler and around the base of the jet nozzles and then apply the grout on top of that. Now this is why you want a container with a lid. Save the rest of that paint for later whilst you wait for this to dry. Once you've given the grout time to dry you want to reopen that PVA and grey paint mix and just hit everything with it. Hit the pipes with it, hit the skull, hit the top layer, hit all of the wires, everything. Make it grey. It's your undercoat. Once everything's been undercoated, you can now really imagine this as a single piece of terrain. It's looking pretty 40k. Nice. Now, the foam is protected, so we can hit it with spray paint. We're going to be hitting the top level and the pipes, we're going to be hitting the under level and the skull. No airbrush, just a can of white spray paint. Don't worry if you accidentally hit the stonework or some of the pipes you didn't mean to, we'll be tidying these up later. Now we ended up using two, count of two, metallic paints. One is dirt cheap silver from the uh, dollar store, the other is Citadel Retributor Gold, just because that's the gold that I've got the most of. I'm going to be using this over all of the pipe work as well as all of the wires, all with gold. The silver I'll be using later. Nice. Now if you make a mistake and accidentally hit some of the skull with gold, don't worry about it, you'll be tidying it up later. And now next we're going to be creating a nice glowing effect for the plasma generator on the underside. Ultimately, all you really need is some red, yellow, black, and white. You don't need an airbrush, you don't need expensive paints. This is just dollar store paint that I've watered down, and I'm going to use red first. Now red is the cooler color, so I'm going to start with that at the base, closer to where the uh, generator touches the stonework. Nice and even. I immediately follow this using yellow, also watered down in exactly the same way, and I'm going to cover all of the area that I didn't already touch with the red. Try to make it even, maybe two coats, doesn't really matter if you don't. Now mix some of that yellow with some red to make an orange, and paint over the middle ground between the yellow and the red. The name of the game is to try and blend these colours in. So as I'm moving closer to the yellow, I'm going to be adding more yellow to that orange to help make it as smooth as possible. If it's not getting there fast enough, add some white. Now of course I repeated this process on both sides of the generator and tried to make it as even as possible. Give yourself time. The only problem with using cheaper paints is they often take a little while to dry. So on this particular project, I waited overnight just to see how things were looking. I can see that there's still a little bit more of a contrast between the orange and red than I ideally would like, so I decided to add another layer just to help further even it out. You don't have to do this step, but this is for my own satisfaction. 
just to really accentuate that contrast, I'm going to add a tiny, tiny amount of black to some red paint and then apply that at the very base of the generator, right next to the stonework. This is the colder, darker zone. The small amount of black added to the red makes a really mean looking colour, which is exactly what we're looking for. Again, small amount of black. Black will very easily overwhelm a red. I'm just jamming it in right at the base. Don't worry about hitting the stone, we'll be tidying that up later. In yet another takeaway container that has a lid, you're going to take some of that red and black that you mixed from the palette earlier, and you're going to combine that with a lot of acrylic medium. I'm talking like a 0.5 to a 9.5 ratio. Mix it together and you've got yourself a wash. Now this is going to end up looking a lot more dark purple than what you see here when it dries. Now this wash is going to seek the recessed areas and just darken them, providing further contrast between the raised hot areas and the lower dark areas, as well as helping to blend all the transitions from red, orange and yellow. Now just use your finger to wipe off any excess wash as well as to help preserve some of the brighter colours on the raised areas. But don't be afraid to add more layers as you go along. Sweet! Now whilst you're waiting for that to dry, get out some of that grey paint again and we're just going to tidy up the area around the generator. For this step I probably use the most care just in terms of my brushwork as I have on the entire piece, as I don't want to have to go back and touch up those glowing generators, but we're just going to be going over any of these areas we've accidentally touched the stonework or any of the other mechanical areas. Now that's looking a lot tidier. Get some black paint and hit the jet exhausts. Once the black paint is dry, hit them with some silver. And when you're waiting for that silver to dry, get a small amount of white paint on a flat brush, rub most of it off, and then start dry brushing the raised edges on the generator. This dry brush is to help create a white hot effect on the uppermost areas of the generator. If you put too much on, just rub it off with your hand. Following that, but still using white paint, I've got a cheap, larger brush, and I'm just dry brushing the stonework as well as the grey pipes. As you dry brush, try to avoid accidentally hitting any of the metal surfaces, but if you do, you can just use your finger to rub it off before it's dry. When you've done that, get out some brown paint. Again, I'm using my raw umber in burnt sienna, because that's what I've got the most of, and another piece of old sponge. Dab some paint onto it, rub most of it off, kind of like you're dry brushing with a sponge, but not quite, and then dab this over all the white surfaces. That includes the skull and the upper deck. Now I'm using the same weathering technique on the skull and the upper deck because I want them to look like they're made of the same metal. So same weathering method, different material, should look the same. When you're done dabbing on the paint with your old piece of sponge, you can get out a wash. Now I'm using a homemade brown wash, but you can get similar results if you use Citadel washes or just mix acrylic paint and a lot of water. I'm going to be applying this over the skull here and just using a piece of tissue to wipe off the excess. So the deck is starting to look nice and grubby and I'm making sure that I'm pl applying plenty of the wash on the gold piping and letting it pool in the gutter there so it's going to look really grubby. Both the skulls got the treatment and also I'm just doing a little bit of runoff using the wash from the exit points on these pipes. This is not a green machine. So in the end, the only parts of this build that are not going to get the brown wash are the stonework and of course the glowing generator. The jet engines, the little charge keys and pipes that are hanging off this will all get some of the wash, and of course, where appropriate, more dripping. If you get some dripping that you don't want, just use a tissue to clean it up. Following that, we're going to be using some weathering powder. Now this is of course once the wash is dry, and we're going to be applying this more or less over all of the surfaces, again, accepting the glowing generator and the stonework where possible. If some gets on the stone, no big deal. Apply it like you did the wash and use a tissue to tidy it up. Once all the weathering powder is down, you can just seal it in place using some spray varnish. Make sure you use a matte finish or else it will look glossy and wet. 
This was homemade weathering powder, of course, just from some crushed pastels. When that's done, you can take off the protective paper off the wine glass stems and tidy up any paint as needed there. Now this is going to be the last 5% that I've mentioned a few times in previous videos that will help just take your project to the next level. We're going to be doing some really rough and dirty object source lighting. Now of course object source lighting has tons and tons and tons of information on different methods, different materials, different techniques to do it. It can be incredibly involved, but I'm just doing the simplest version possible, which is just dry brushing the area around the glowing source with the base color of the glow. In this case, this is that same red that we began with, and I'm just lightly dry brushing it on the stonework. Try to imagine where light would be logically hitting and hit those areas with some of the dry brush, but any areas that would have been in shadow, such as behind stone or behind other objects, do not hit with the dry brush. Imagine there's a straight line going from light source to the stone and you're done. All right, that is the build done. Again, a big thank you to Four Guys and a Broken Dwarf, as well as Nosferatu Unbound for letting me know about this challenge. And of course, a big thanks to WW for the use of his music. And uh, a special heartfelt thank you to my subscribers for checking this out. And if this is, this is the first of my videos that you're watching, a big thank you to you too. I'm just flattered that people take an interest in what I make. Um, this stuff takes up space in my house. I have fun making it. And I hope that you enjoy checking out these videos and maybe learn something that you can share with your friends. Uh, yeah, so on that note, if you could do the YouTube thing, uh, liking, subscribing, and, uh, you know, letting your friends know about this sort of content so you can perhaps upgrade your gaming table or just make it a little bit more bonkers, that would mean a lot to me. You know? Let me know. I really didn't realize how big this thing was. Um, particularly when I sat it next to my Castellan here. Uh, she is absolutely dwarfed by this thing. Uh, this is going to make one heck of a centerpiece. I really hope 2020 will just chill out at some point so I can actually have a game uh, with all this huge terrain and <laughs> maybe justify having made it in the first place. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty nuts. You can see it here that uh, infantry have a really easy time chilling out on top of it. And what's more, you may be thinking, how stable can this thing possibly be? You know, it's only held up with some quite thin wine glasses. I've got to tell you, this has actually worked out really good. Um, it's definitely suitable for gameplay, as you will see in a sec. There we are. It's got a Castellan and a tank standing on top of it and it's spinning. No issue. Now if you've got any feedback or got any questions, uh, do not hesitate to hit me up. Please let me know in the comments. Um, you can also check out my Instagram. I also try to respond to everybody who uh, reaches out to me, but I also do tend to post like sneak peeks of in progress builds. So if you want to get an idea of what I'm working on, uh, that's a good way to get a look. I am trying to have a semi-regular release schedule, but you know, like everybody, this is just a pretty intense year. I'm doing what I can to keep these things coming out at a decent pace for you. Yeah, thank you for checking it out. Uh, I should have put all the links below, so thank you to everybody, and I hope to see you again in the next project. Oh yeah, this has got skulls in it, so I guess this might count as a Halloween video? Yeah. I'll go with that. <laughs>